This week I learned just because you know what's going to happen in a book doesn't mean a really great author can't still get you there. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update, guys, about the uh, midway point here of May, and we're going to kind of push through through the second half, and it'll be summer really, really soon, really, really soon. So uh, parents that are trying to get your kids through the end of school, I feel you. I know what you're going through, but we're almost, almost there. So guys, fun week, and we're going to talk about it here on the channel. We'll begin like usual by talking about what am I reading. Well, guys, this has kind of taken over my life this week. This is Lonesome Dove. You might have heard of it. I, I think it's got a chance to be a really, really good book, a really, really popular book. It's got a great chance of having some sort of legacy on the real guys. I mean, I don't know what I can tell you about Lonesome Dove that everyone else hasn't said, but since you're here, I guess I'll go ahead and tell you. I think I'm about this far. Uh, I imagine I'll be finishing it this week sometime. Uh, yesterday, I read about 300 pages of it. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really great, guys. I mean, this is an incredible, incredible book. And I think you've probably heard everyone say that before. So if you've read it, you know, and if you haven't read it, you've heard it probably somewhere. The thing with this is I have seen the miniseries. And I love it, right? And I thought, okay, well, I already know all these characters' fate, so nothing can really surprise me. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. I can know what's coming. It's that thing where you're like, you're watching a murder in slow motion and you're trying to stop it and you can't do it. Larry McMurtry is such an amazing character writer that characters that I was sad to see go in the main series, I'm bawling while reading this book because he, he has just developed these characters so well. So much more development in the book for these characters than you can obviously have on a main series, even if it was like eight hours long. Still, there's so much more that you can do in a book, and McMurtry's got to be one of the best character writers I've ever read. And that's not hyperbole. That's not recency bias, guys. He's just that good. He really is just a master at this. So if you're a character first fan, like I am when you're reading books, uh, I can't think of a better one than this. I always say things like legacy takes time when I'm ranking books, guys. But no way. There's no way that this isn't going to be a top 10 book all time for me. It's incredible. And here's the thing. I try to say this and I feel like people think I'm insulting it. I feel like I've been reading this for months. It's been two weeks, okay? And I'm that far into it. And I'm still having a great time. That's not what I mean. I'm just saying it's, it is as long. It feels as long as it is, but it doesn't feel long because you're like, oh my God, I want to get to the end of it. It just feels long because you really feel like you are going on this journey from Texas to Montana with Gus and Colin and group. You really, really do. And it's just, it's heartbreaking, man. It's hard to say another word for it. It's just, you will get so connected to all these characters that you're like, please don't do anything you know, bad to them, sir. And unfortunately, Larry does lots of lots of bad things uh, to these characters. And it's just, it's one of those things where you're reading it and you're like, how in the hell did America ever conquer westward expansion? Because it's like, how do we have enough people left to, you know, grow the population? It's just, it's, it was such a rough, rough time in the country. And I think he, he captures all that stuff just beautifully. This guy is a wizard. And yeah, I didn't think I would be. But I'm very interested in those uh, sequels, prequels of the Lonesome Dove series now for sure. Because this guy is amazing. And I'm going to want to see some of these characters, maybe their younger versions, more after I finish this book. So uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the expectations were already high. Guys, it's shooting through that roof. It is just that good of a book. I can't wait to finish it. I'm, I'm definitely going to do a full review of this. Even though, like I said, I feel like everyone out there has read this book besides me. I'm definitely going to have to do a review about Lonesome Dove and talk about why it is such an amazing, amazing read, guys. But again, like I said, most of you probably already know that. So if you haven't been like you were like me and you said, oh, I don't really like Westerns. I don't think that that's anything. I'm like, doesn't matter. You're going to love it. Put it on your TBR immediately. And also working my way through this. So as you can see, guys, I've had a lot of death on my plate this week. Uh, rolling through it. Almost done with it here. Uh, I, I should hopefully be getting uh, that review copy of Lightbringer soon. So I want to make sure I continue to work on that as well as Lonesome Dove. And that's probably why it feels like it's uh, taking so long for me to get through Lonesome Dove. Not, not, not. Because I'm splitting time with such another, such a massive, massive book with so many grim things happening. But hey, this is the business that we've chosen, right? But Dark Age, yeah, even on a reread, it's it's just as gloomy. So uh, like I said last week, guys, make sure you're in a really good place before you try to read Dark Age because uh, Dark Age is more than just a clever, clever name. More about Red Rising coming up here in a minute. Yeah, we haven't had any time to read it. We made no progress on Last Hero. 
uh, it's just any free time that my oldest and I have had. We've been playing Zelda, you know, until way past bedtime every night. So uh, he knows that he can uh, he can push the boundaries a little bit with me when it comes to Zelda because I'm such a big Zelda fan. He's he's lucky. He's lucky to have a, a parent that is as big a Zelda nerd as he is. And, you know, uh, hey, there it is. Use that to your advantage, and he has. So we've been kind of doing that. So I haven't really had a chance to read very much of that. So, guys, moving along to what am I going to read? Well, obviously, I'm going to finish Dark Age and Lonesome Dove. I imagine one or both of those will roll off the schedule this week. I'm so close to the end of both of those. Uh, If I do start my next read, it's going to be Of Darkness and Light by Ryan Cahill. That's book number two in The Bound and the Broken. That's the last thing... I have on my May TBR, and who knows, maybe I can get a jump start on June if I do finish a little early. But again, uh, even though these are two tomes, uh, Of Darkness and Light isn't exactly small. You know, it's bigger than the first book, not quite <laughs> as beefy as that third book is, but uh, I'm excited to return to that world because, guys, I love book one quite a bit. I, I really did. And there's other people in the Discord right now who are reading Of Darkness and Light, and they're saying it blows the first book away. So I'm very, very excited uh, to continue with that series. But yeah, that's really all I got this week, guys. I... I it's, a, it's, it's easy to talk about what you've been reading when you've only been reading like, you know, one or two books, you know, but I, I'm, I'm glad they're all quality books. I haven't had any bad reads this month and uh, I'm just I'm just overjoyed that Lonesome Dove has met and exceeded all those expectations I have. And uh, yeah, good times, good times on the old TBR, guys. How about this week on the channel? Was a little bit lighter than usual. Uh, like I said, we've got some personal stuff going on around the house my my uh, oldest is turning 11 today actually and we are having he's having some friends over for a sleepover that's what he wanted so i think i had a panic attack uh the first time he had a sleepover and it was one one kid now i think it's gonna be five so we have five kids here tonight uh so that's gonna be interesting you know that'll be exciting so uh, as far as what uh, I got done this week was really getting ready for that, using our free time to play Zelda or reading Lonesome Dove. Didn't have a lot of time to record, but I did manage to speak with Richard Swan, a new interview with the author. That's the author of Tyranny of Faith and Justice of Kings, the Empire of the Wolf trilogy that's, that's working its way through. Richard's an awesome guy. I want to thank him for playing through the pain he was suffering from a nagging cough. You know, so he had to cough about every 16 seconds or so. But he did play through the pain. I'm glad he did that. And Richard's just an awesome guy. Uh, I, I think that we talk so much about stuff that's not book related that it was fun to have him on just kind of shoot the shit. It was almost more of a talk about nothing than it was an interview with the author because I think we talked about uh, Star Wars and Dune and video games almost as much as we talked about his books. But uh, lots of stuff in there about, you know, how he got signed and how he just cha- see how he how he tackles the writing method and stuff that I think if you are an inspiring author, uh, lots of good things to learn from a guy like Richard who uh, who seems to be close to making it. I mean, you always say with this business, you never say you just, you've made it, you know, but I, I feel like he's at this point now where he's he's got all the eyes on his product and people are always going to be anxious to see what he comes up with next. You know, he's talking about how he's got like his next three trilogies pretty much either in the drafting phase or he's in pitching them now and things like that. So the guy is a workaholic and... You know, us fantasy fans that have just grown tired of authors who don't want to give us new books, uh, guys like him uh, are, are the type that we kind of latch on to because they do have a great, great output, and it's always quality first. And I do appreciate him coming on the channel. Great, great guy. Best Harkonnen I've ever met in my life. Thank you, Richard, for coming on. Uh, I did a trailer reveal. That was a first for the channel. I've had people ask me to do cover reveals for him, but this is the first time I've ever had somebody ask me to do a trailer reveal. This was for the Combat Codes. It is a new book by Alexander Darwin. Actually, it's uh, not a new. It's a, it's new traditionally published. He self-published The Combat Codes, the trilogy, uh, originally a few years back. And it got picked up by Orbit. So they've given it, you know, the kind of the glossy Orbit treatment. Let them brush up some things, fix some things, uh, maybe move some things around for continuity's sake. Things like that. And they're giving him a nice new official release. And they gave him a nice trailer there. And they asked me if I would debut it for him. And I said, absolutely. I plan to read that probably in July. I think that's what's looking like on my schedule right now. Because I did get my review copy of The Will of the Many, which now is actually going to have to be read during after release. But hey, that's just what happens with the timing. And uh, so that, that I'm reading that first, and then I'll be reading Combat Codes probably the next month. But excited to do it. Alexander's an awesome, awesome guy. And thank you, Alexander and Orbit, for asking me to do that for you. It was a ton of fun for me. I hope I can put any interest on it that I actually can help add to it. I'm excited to do that for you. And then I did my one review, guys, this week was Into the Multiverse. And we talked about The Girl who loved Tom Gordon. I think quite an underrated Stephen King book. 
And I mean, you can look at the comments right now uh, of that video, and it's half people who hated it, half people who loved it, half people who think it's a novel, half people who think it's not, <laughs> you know, because it's 220 pages. But I, I said about that video is that uh, it's amazing that in just 200 plus pages, that Stephen King is able to find a way to scare the hell out of you. And I think he's got a great assistant there in that the forest, the forest can be quite quite scary especially if you're a nine-year-old girl i would imagine that that's got to be quite scary to be lost in that especially when there's a big dangerous hell beast maybe hunting you you know so those are things that uh, stephen king does really really well obviously he writes kids extremely well and he also writes scary scary things in the dark very very well and this was kind of that moment in the 90s where you know he kind of shifted away from horror and he gotten into more drama family friction things like that and this is the last video. You, know, you got Desperation, then Bag of Bones, and then The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. You can see, okay, he was starting to slowly return back to his horror roots. And this was the last book he wrote before his accident. And so it was, you could see kind of where he was trending for a bit. Now, after post accident, he was all in full dark tower mode because it spooked him to a point where he thought, I got to finish this before I die. I don't want to Robert Jordan this, you know? And that's why you see everything after that book being somehow tied to the Dark Tower in one way or another, because I think it really was. The, the Path of the Beam was really just on his mind. But there's some Dark Tower tie-ins in there. So Into the Multiverse, I always like to talk about those nice connections and whatnot that happened in those stories. And uh, maybe you can find a couple while you're there. So uh, yeah, underrated book, I think. Uh, it's nothing that's going to change your life. But I will say, guys, that many of us have read lesser Stephen King books. It's a, it's a pretty good one, and it's low commitment. It's very low commitment. But again, if you're like me, you find the woods kind of a little bit spooky, I think you're going to enjoy what you find there. So how about next week plans, guys? Hopefully after this birthday party deal is kind of solved, just kind of just closed off. Uh, the saga here is closed off. I can get back to actually recording some stuff. I was thinking about doing a new Why You Should Read. I did one recently about Narnia, but I'd like to get back to doing more of these because I like doing them because I like to put more eyes on things that I really do enjoy. But I was thinking about doing something a little more contemporary, and I thought, what's a better way to do that than with my contemporary favorite author right now, I think, and Blake Crouch. I think Blake Crouch is just somehow... Really popular, but still underrated. And I think that's just in the fantasy community because people are like, oh, well, I don't really read thrillers. You know, I don't really read, you know, sci fi thrillers, techno thrillers, or, you know, serial killer thrillers, things. I don't really, that's not really my style. And with me, with Blake Crouch, I've been reading him in reverse order. You know, I started with Dark Matter and then Recursion, then Wayward Pines. And I've just kind of been going backwards to all of his older books. And I've been surprised to see evolution in a different way he's becoming less sci-fi going it this way and he's more of just uh you know like a police kind of thriller or crime or detective thriller and i've had a great time with that and i feel like i want to kind of sell that to you guys in that if you're tired of those 800 plus page fantasy epics you need something quick something that's delicious something that's just gonna not you're not gonna be able to stop turning the pages it really is a great, great palate cleanser. And I think Blake Crouch is just perfect for that in the way that Michael Crichton used to be for me back when I was in high school. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I mean this as... It, this is something that means a lot to me to say this. He is the next Michael Crichton. And that's a hell of an honor for me to bestow upon someone because Michael Crichton is my second favorite author of all time. So that's uh, that's quite a thing. So you know then already how important Blake Crouch books are to me. And I'm just amazed, guys, that I've read like nine of his books now. None of them have been misses. That's a pretty good track record, right? I say batting a thousand is not so bad. So I'm going to kind of talk about that, give you a rundown of some of my favorites and why I think maybe uh, maybe you should like them. Then we're getting closer to June, as I talked about, so I figure it's time to go ahead and let people know about my schedule for June, uh, June 2024 20, TBR. Uh, this month it was kind of slow because I only had you know three or four books on there because of the length. It's going to be a little different next month. I do have a, a big number on there, and I've even got some If I Have Time books. So I do have some shorter books, but it's always, you know, hey, how fast am I going to run through some of these? You know, you like to leave your options open, but I got my for certain, so then I'll have my if I have some times, and I know there are a few on there that people have been waiting for me to to read for a little while. Just a little preview, guys. August. August is when I'm going to be resuming Malazan. Everybody asks me all the time, when are you going back to Malazan? Every one of those CBR videos. Oh, I was hoping to see Malazan here. Guys, I'm taking a cruise for my 45th birthday. Uh, the end of July, beginning of August. And I, the only book I am taking with me on that trip, Toll the Hound. So if you've been waiting patiently for that, there you go. It's going to be happening. And then I guess probably the biggest news, guys, uh, if you missed the community tab, you missed the announcements on social media, 
I am going to finally have a guest on the channel I've been looking forward to for a long time. So if I'm going to give you a why you should read about my favorite contemporary author, how about my favorite modern sci-fi writer, Pierce Brown? Pierce Brown is someone I've been trying to get on this channel for a while. He's that type that goes dark on social media when he's writing, and he was really, really writing hard for Lightbringer and Red God to finish up the Red Rising saga. Well, the second he got back on Twitter, I just asked him, hey, you know, hey, now's the time to, to, to finally have this conversation. He agreed. We've got it set up. And guys, that'll be happening Thursday night, May the 25th at 8 p.m. Texas time. I'll be talking to Pierce Brown. Howler 1. Can't wait to pick his brain. Because like I said, I talked to him already before that book signing, but I'm sure we're going to go down many, many more paths because I didn't want to hold up the line behind me, even though he was willing to stand there and talk to me for as long as I did once. So I'm hoping that he has the same energy this time and will talk to me for as long as we would like to speak with him because I imagine it wouldn't be a short conversation if he does give me that privilege. And guys, out on my channel, but over on Andrew's Wizardly Reads, Tuesday night, I'll be his guest over there. Uh, forget what the program's called. I'm sorry, Andrew. I forget what your your, your 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 version of Talk About Nothing. I forget what it's called, but he's going to have me on there. And we're going to talk about you know a lot of everything, probably. Because uh, with Andrew, you never know. You never know where the conversation's going to go. And uh, I'll, I promise I'll keep my shots about him DNFing everything to below about four or five. I'll try. I will try. But I'm so happy that he asked me to come on because uh, uh, I'm excited to go on anyone's channel and talk to him. It's a lot of fun because I don't have to do any editing once I am done. But that's it for books, guys. I do have a couple of uh, TV and movie talk things. Now, look, we haven't done a ton of TV because, like I said, we've been playing Zelda. Uh, but I did want to talk about they do. They did start releasing some information about the Warlord Chronicles adaptation by Bernard Cornwell. Uh, MGM Plus, I, another streaming service I didn't even know existed. Uh, they're going to be releasing it in August. Ten episodes. Uh, this is called The Winter King. Uh, I love this trilogy so much, guys. I've reviewed the trilogy on the channel. I, I love it. Uh, I try to always say, wait till we see the final product. Not too impressed with the screenshots that they showed us at first. I mean, the first shot of Durful. I'm like, is that... That looks like an extra from Rings of Power from one of the elves. What is that? That is not how I picture Durful at all. Uh, the first glimpse of Arthur... Doesn't exactly look like the guy who's uh, you know trying to, to, to win wars. Let's just put it that way. But again, I always say go by the ledger rule. And the ledger rule is when Heath Ledger got cast as the Joker and everyone complained about it and then he was great. So I always say wait until you see the final product with it. Look, with me, with fantasy adaptation, if you want to call the Warlord Chronicles fantasy, uh, historical fiction, whatever you want to call it, uh, with me, that time period, I'm always hope for the best, expect the worst. I want to say, look, look how great The Last Kingdom turned out. Who knows? Maybe because I just I love this one. I never read Last Kingdom. So maybe because I love this one, I'm just worried it's not going to be that great. But again, let's wait and see the final product. There are a lot of competent people attached to it. So I'm hoping, uh, just as a starter, they actually read the book. That's my hope. We shall see. I got to talk about Air, this movie, Air, that came out. Um, <laughs> it was one of those I thought, that sounds like an interesting choice for a movie. And it's about the guys who signed Michael Jordan and Nike and basically created the Air Jordans. And it's a really good movie if you are interested in the business and marketing side of you know just anything. I think if you're into that, I very much am. You'll love that. If you are a Gen Xer, you're going to love it because, I mean, it has like every... Every Yacht Rock you know, song that you've ever liked will be in that soundtrack. But the aesthetic was just spot on. It really was just great mid-1980s. Really captured all that well. I like the focus of putting it between you know the, the business people and Michael Jordan's parents. And Michael, they never even show his face. There's an actor there that plays Michael Jordan, never even shows his face. I think he has maybe three lines the entire movie. And I think it was really great showing it that way. But yeah, again, just a lot of fun. A really, really good 1980s uh, period piece, I guess you'd call it. But again, I just love the aesthetic. It was really, really well done. You can capture that 1980s look just like that so well. And I love seeing Jason Bateman play like a scoundrel again, if you want to call him a scoundrel on that. You know, just being very Jason Bateman. You know, he's great in Ozark, but it's like, I, I miss him kind of being the sassy, back-talking type. You know, I, I like that version of Jason Bateman. He's good. Matt Damon, of course, as always, is really, really good. So uh, check it out. It was good to see uh, Chris Tucker again. I feel like I hadn't seen him in a minute. But uh, yeah, great movie. I think it's uh, it's streaming on Amazon now for free if you guys want to watch it. Uh, really, really good. I don't care if you've never even owned a pair of Air Jordans. I think you might enjoy it, especially if you're uh, you, you're one of those who grew up dreaming, you know, that you were, you were, let's just say you were living a little bit below the poverty line. You grew up dreaming that you could afford a pair of Air Jordans. I think it would be entertaining for you to, to watch. But guys, that 
really was my week. Um, like I said, we've just been playing Zelda. Uh, I finally did unpack the PS5, uh, upgrading some of my old games. Hey, do you know Horizon Zero Dawn is a free... It's a, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 has a uh, has a free upgrade to PS5 when you put that in there. That's really cool. That's really cool. I put Ghost of Tsushima in there. It is not a free upgrade. So apparently that doesn't work with everything. But that's pretty, pretty cool. But uh, no, we probably won't be playing with that. I just want to get it all set up, get all my stuff done, get the PS4 moved upstairs for the kids. And that's really all I've really done with it so far, guys, is just do the data transfer, which was really easy. I got to give credit for that. Look, I shit all over the last couple console generations about how user-unfriendly everything is. Really, really easy, guys. Now, here's the thing about the, the data transfer. It'll say, hey, we found your PS4. Do you want to transfer your data over? Plug in an Ethernet cable. Because, oh, my God, I was doing it without it. And it said it was going to take, like, 99-plus hours. I plugged in the Ethernet cable. It was done in, like, an hour. Amazing. Amazing. So, really cool. So, I got all my old stuff over there, all my trophies, if you care about that kind of stuff. It's really cool. So, I'm just saying I want to give them props. I'm sure Xbox does this as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the new Xbox. But, uh, again, hey, I know I'm behind the times here on these next-gen consoles. But, hey, I did get one. Well, we are probably going to... Uh, since uh, he's having all his friends over and they're going to take the Switch, we'll probably just play some Hogwarts Legacy this week. And that's probably what me and Mom are going to do. But uh, that was my week, guys. What is your week look like? What's your week on looking like? What are you reading? What are you watching? What are you playing? Why don't you drop in the comments and let me know, guys. Hi. I'll talk to you there.